We appreciate it. We're on the homeland of White Mountain Apaches, and so thank you for joining us. Uh, we're here in Pine Top, and we also have uh, a, a second meeting going on. Our second, we're streaming at Avondale, and so we're streaming this on WebEx, and it'll be posted online via YouTube, so you'll have a chance to look at it if you don't get it all today. Uh, in Pine Top, we're under the jurisdiction of the tribal government, so you're required to follow the laws of the tribe, which includes wearing a mask at all times. That is the tribal mask mandate here on the reservation. So thank you for your consideration. In Avondale, for those of you that are in Avondale, we ask you to follow the Arizona Department of Health guidelines regarding COVID-19. If you're not fully vaccinated, you should wear a mask in public space. If you'd like to make a public comment, you may do so by signing with staff and filling out a public comment card, which I think most of you have already done. Even though this meeting will begin at 6 p.m., anyone can attend and submit a public speaking card at any time during the meeting, and we will do our best to accommodate you. There is going to be an American Sign Language interpreter, and we're also transcribing the proceedings. Please speak clearly and slowly so that we can include your name and all the information for the record. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, my colleagues on the commission. I'll start to my immediate left here. Hello, my name is Erica Newberg and I am chairwoman, uh, registered independent, and I live in Chandler. And I see Commissioner Beale. I think you're on mute, sir. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, my name is David Meal, and I'm the commissioner from Pima County, and I appreciate all of you attending tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meal. Uh, anybody else? Okay, we have two others that should be joining us, and when they do, we'll have them introduce themselves. Like I said, I'm Derek Watchman, the vice chairman. I'm, I'm the uh, Democratic appointee, and I represent Apache County, and I come from Windrock, Arizona, so thank you. Uh, now I'd like to move on to item number two on the agenda, and staff will read the rules of the meeting. Staff. Um, additionally, speakers are required to follow proper decorum. It must be appropriate. Staff and Excuse me, we're not able to hear the rules here in Avondale. If you could repeat those. Okay, I believe you guys can hear us now. I apologize, I'm gonna to have to start over. Citizens may only speak when recognized by the chair or the presiding officer of the meeting if the chair is absent or otherwise has delegated hearing administration authority. In compliance with Arizona's open meeting law, speakers should confine their comments statements to the issue on the posted agenda, which is before the commission. Speakers are also requested to limit their comments to approximately two minutes. In an effort to allow for as many speakers as possible, the commission may adjust the time limits depending on the amount of speakers requesting to be heard. Additionally, speakers are required to follow proper decorum. Speakers must use appropriate language. Foul and or abusive language will not be tolerated. Any speaker failing to follow proper decorum or any other guidelines may be asked to leave. Any breach of the peace or disruption of a commission public hearing may be cause of re report to law enforcement. If someone has already expressed the same sentiment you wish to express, 
you may say so and your comments will be recorded. If you have already expressed your thoughts at a previous meeting, you do not need to speak again. Your comments were recorded in the public record. This is a nonpartisan meeting. Please do not distribute political material in the meeting room. Opposing viewpoints may be expressed by the citizens present. As a courtesy, citizens are reminded to address their comments to the chair and the commission and not to the audience present. Please show respect for all speakers and avoid personal comments. Remember, the commission must hear all sides of an issue in order to make an informed decision. At this time, we will now begin public comment. Good evening, Madam Chair and Vice Chair and members of the commission and the listening audience. Um, we're going to start with the introduction of our Apache interpreter. Yes, good evening. My name is Sean Sanchez, and uh, I'll just be interpreting English to Apache, Apache to English. Ready? He does speak Apache on us, so, okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to first introduce the Honorable um, Glendina Lee Gatewood, who is the chairman of the White Mount Apache, Madam Chair. I just asked her if I should speak in Apache and will everyone understand what I'm saying here tonight? Okay. Dagote, <laughs> good evening, honorable chairwoman, vice chairman and commissioners. My name is Gwendina Lee Gatewood. I'm the tribal chairwoman of this great White Mount Apache tribe. Welcome to the Fort Apache Indian Reservation. Thank you for accepting our request to host a meeting here for the people here and the people of the White Mountain community. Our tribe covers over 1.6 million acres with a population of over 17,000 and growing. As a sovereign tribal nation, providing services to our people is of great importance. It's so crucial uh, that the tribe be in a healthy Native American majority district in order to elect a candidate of our choice. The White Mountain Apache tribe requests to maintain the districts as close to the current maps as possible, meaning the legislative and congressional maps adopted in January of 2012. The tribe's reservation currently sits within Arizona's legislative district seven, congressional district two within Navajo, Apache and Gila counties. It's important to the White Mountain Apache tribe to be in a district with communities that share our same interests, values and lived experiences. It's a part of our history. It's ancestral to who we are of the White Mountain, White Mountain community, actually. And we want to ensure that our people that live in the neighboring towns like Springerville, Pine Top, Lakeside, and Sholo, I grew up in Sholo, by the way, and that they're not cut out from the district as they currently are on the latest uh, proposed map. By including surrounding communities of interest into a district that contains the White Mount Apache tribe, we wish to maintain a high Native American percentage. Therefore, other non-Native American communities, preferably like Flagstaff, should be placed into neighboring districts to balance the population and maintain a high Native American population is uh, needed. And this would bring in our neighboring communities of interest, Pine Top, Lakeside, Sholo, Springerville, where our Apache Native American people live, go to school, shop, and the economy. It's important that we're able to elect a leader, a candidate of choice to ensure that our voices are heard. And it's our hope that the commission uh, hears the voice of the White Mountain Apache tribe and works to preserve and maintain the current legislative district seven and congressional district two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next speakers, and I'm going to be naming off the next 10 speakers. So if, I, if you can just kind of line up against that wall um, as I call your name. The next speaker is a member of the White Mountain Apache Tribal Council, Aubrey Ade, and then Navajo County Supervisor Daphne Whitesinger, Councilman from uh, Snowflake, Byron Lewis, Patrick Day. Eric Kramer, Cheryl Eaton, Judy Inman, 
Lisa Foya, Virginia Dotson, Daryl Seymour. Councilman a day. I'm going to say a few words in the Apache introduction. Hey, I couldn't stay in the top or still good be you. Hey, my name is good. My name is Aubrey a day. I'm 1 of the council. District 3 representative. As a chairwoman, the gave which stated it is important to try to ensure that we are in the healthy native American. Majority district. The white melon Apache understand the race cannot consider a factor in redistricting. But as you are aware, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 provides opportunity to create Native American majority district if certain requirements are met. These requirements set forth Thornburg versus Jingles are currently met. As to the first criteria, there is enough minority population to create majority minority district using the current map adopted in 2012. This area covers all or part of the reservation of the White Mount Apache, San Carlos tribe, Navajo Nation, and the Hopi tribe. Second, history has shown that these tribal nations vote as a block as we support similar issue cause candidate. Lastly, history also showed that pattern exists a majority voting against Native American preferred candidate because all three factors of the jingle tests are met. The opportunity to create Native American majority district is satisfied. It is important to the White Mound Apache tribe to be in a district with a community that share our same interests, values, and life experience. Being in this type of community of interest of other Native American tribes, such as those that speak the same language. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Donna Faye Whitesinger, Navajo County Board of Supervisors. I'm here to speak on behalf of my family, my children, and those I represent. Um, thank you to all of you on the Independent Redistricting Committee uh, for taking the time to serve Arizona and to do this important and thankless work sometimes, right? I know that the task ahead of you is quite difficult, and I am requesting that you reconsider the draft maps that make and make needed changes that make the districts more competitive and create a balanced opportunity for all communities to have appropriate representation. The current draft maps will force tribes to be ignored and further marginalized. The proposed maps will muffle the needs of tribal communities and silence the advocacy needed for tribes. Tribes deserve to be fairly represented and have the ability to choose the representation that best align with the needs of the people. Our tribal nations, just as our neighboring communities, are integral to the fabric of Arizona, and these maps do not represent that. I support the congressional maps submitted by the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission, CD, 10101 in the map submitted by the Navajo or the Coconino Board of Supervisors. We have come a long way as Native Americans in voting voter participation. The past election cycle, over 60% of eligible tribal voters voted. We have not seen this in historically in the past. And this um, redistricting is important 
it is imperative to protecting constitutional rights of Native Americans that the voting margin change from 7% and made per more competitive to give tribes the opportunity to elect individuals that will advocate for the interests of all communities. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for your time and attendance. We wish you Godspeed on your journey. Decisions that you are going to make will be impactful and important and affect the lives of thousands of people across this area of Northern Arizona. I'm a sixth generation Arizonan, born and bred. My family were the original settlers out at Moenkopi. Grandmother was born the year before Arizona became a state, lived to be 103. I represent the voice of many of the constituents in Snowflake, where I have the honor to serve as a city council member, who have shared their concerns about these maps and, and the redistricting affects the way of life that we have here. We have a rich heritage as well, one of mining, farming, ranching, that we would like to see preserved. With all due respect to the Native American population here who deserve their own voice, as do urban, Rural voice has not been heard effectively since 2011 when the redistricting originally took place. I would encourage you to keep Flagstaff um, in LD6. They do not share the same values. They do not share the same political outcomes, the same geographic demographics, or the same outlooks. And I don't think they have the same vision for Arizona. Another situation for the commission to take into effect has been a topic that has been debated for the last 60 years and, and may go on for another 100, and that's water adjudication. There's a significant difference between those who are seeking to acquire water and those who are seeking to preserve it. By allowing each of these constituencies to have their own representation and their own voice, we could bring a more equitable solution to this problem that has been vexing all cultures in this area. Thank you. And again, I wish you Godspeed on your journey. Safe travels. I know you'd rather be here than or would rather be anywhere else than here just about right now. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Patrick Day. I live in an unincorporated area of Apache County near Concho. I'm speaking for myself and my family who own property in Apache County. I'm an independent minded voter who believes the congressional district should be competitive. The current configuration of District 1 makes it a competitive district that exceeds the commission's standard for competitiveness, a maximum 7% spread. Competitive districts encourage candidates to address the needs and concerns of all voters, not just the conservative, not just the majority party. The IRC's draft map of Cong Congressional District 2 takes a highly competitive district and puts it solidly in the camp of one party, as evidenced by the IRC's test races. This anti-competitive imbalance is unnecessary to meet the requirements of the other five congressional criteria. The congressional draft map submitted by the Navajo Nation maintains competition in Congressional District 2 as well as meeting all other criteria. I urge the commission to redraw the lines for CD2. Thank you. At this time, I would also like to introduce to come up to the podium and speak um, one of White Mountain Apache Tribal Council members, Arnold Beach. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Arnold Beach, White Mountain Apache Tribal Council. Been serving the tribe in this capacity for 15 years. Prior to this, 20 years in law enforcement. The White Mountain, the White Mountain Apache Tribe understand that race cannot be considered a factor in redistricting. It is important to the White Mountain Apache Tribe to be in a district with communities that share the same interests, values, and life experience. Being in this type of community of interest with other Native American tribes, such as those that seek the same language, communities that have the same 
history as the White Mountain Apache Tribe and communities that the White Mountain Apache Tribe have collaborated and partnered with throughout the years. Provides the tribe with an increased opportunity to ensure proper representation to the tribe on both the federal and state level. It is also our hope that the commission works to preserve and maintain legislative district seven and congressional district two. I thank you for your time and I do appreciate this time. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Eric. <laughs> um, also at this time, I'd like to introduce um, White Mountain Apache Attorney General, um, Kialona Duma. Kialoha Duma. Hi, good evening. My name is Kealoha Duma, a White Mountain Apache Tribe Attorney General, as well as a proud member of the White Mountain Apache Tribe. I echo what Chairwoman Lee Gatewood stated, as well as our Councilman, uh, Councilman Aubrey Day, as well as Councilman Arnold Beach. The tribe wants to preserve a district as close to the maps as currently, as they currently are as possible. We want to ensure that we have zealous representation. We want to have a Native American minority population we do have a Native American minority population that deserves to have proper representation. Redistricting has, of course, the ability to positively or negatively impact our government, our people, our resources, future resources, and the responsiveness of our representatives. That is extremely important to the White Mountain Apache tribe. As the commission is aware, a low Native American percentage means, uh, meaning below 60%, could uh, mean a dilution of the Native American vote and the inability of Native Americans to elect a candidate of choice. The tribe opposes modifications that would negatively impact the tribe's ability to elect a candidate of choice. As the chairwoman was stating, we want to ensure that the neighboring towns where our people also live are in the same legislative and congressional districts as the people located on the White Mountain Apache Reservation. Along with many other Apache and Native American families, I work in White River, I live in Pine Top. My children go to school in Lakeside. Along with my other fellow tribal members, we shop in Sholo and all the other surrounding communities here in the White Mountains. The White Mountain Apache tribe is a strong driving force for the economy here. And we employed a, a significant number of people from the neighboring communities. As to the congressional map, we'd like to see Prescott moved into another district. And we feel strongly that they are not a community of interest with the White Mountain Apache tribe. They do not share the same values that are important to us. It's important to us that we're able to elect a candidate of our choice. My cousin that spoke earlier, Donna Faye Weisinger, Navajo County Supervisor, she also lives in a neighboring community like myself. It's important for us to be able to elect someone that, like her, that's shares our same interests, our same values, and will be able to give us that important, zealous representation that the White Mountain Apache tribe requires, desires, and demands. Thank you. Also, White Mountain Apache um, tribal representative, representative uh, Casey Doma. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair. Chair, Vice Chair, and, and Honorable Committee members. My name is Casey Duma. I am a representative of White Mountain Apache Tribe as well as a resident of Pine Top, Arizona. And the, the importance of securing districts that empower Native American voters is very important. So when we look at the Voting Rights Act and the ability to secure a Native American majority district, we see that, as been discussed earlier, the factors that allow the commission to design a Native American majority district within the legislative districts, is, those factors are met, the jingles factors. Importantly, one of the very important aspects of having a Native American majority districts is to look at the historical disenfranchisement of Native American voters within the area. If we look at the history of disenfranchisement, we see that there is a definite need to secure the voting power and, and strengthen the voting power of Native Americans. We see that when Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act was gutted um, by the United States Supreme Court, 
we now have this void with a lot of attempts to dilute the Native American voting power to make it more difficult to vote. So securing strong Native American majority districts is very important to the White Mountain Apache people as well as Native Americans within the district. And so we begin to look at the factors that allow the majority Native American districts to be created. It is imperative that, that the voice of the White Mountain Apache leadership is factored in as in defining those communities of interest, the White Mountain Apache leadership is in the best, best situation, the best place to define what is a community of interest for the White Mountain Apache people. And so with that, I'd like to thank you for your efforts in pushing and advocating who uh, wish to carry the voices of the White Mountain Apache people into the respective uh, decisions that you have today. Thank you. Eric. I am Eric Reamer from Pine Top. An approximately equal number of non-competitive districts is not the same thing as competitive districts required by the Arizona Constitution. Native Americans are told that they will be all right in the proposed CD2 because as a 22% minority, they will have influence. Those assurances are not credible when the district is likely to be controlled by actual white supremacists. Gosar is a white supremacist, and he created an image of himself killing a non-white woman for sport. He shouldn't be given Northern Arizona as a personal fief. We need the portions of Yavapai County beyond Mingus Mountain to be removed from Congressional District 2 to make it competitive. The legislative districts in Northeast Arizona are not competitive and violate the charter of the commission. Hacking is as much a form of gerrymandering as splitting. Native Americans are packed into the new LD6 along with much of Flagstaff. This gives three natives 24,000 a year jobs in Phoenix. But when they get there, they aren't even allowed in the room when the budget is discussed. The gerrymander packs Northern Arizona's Democrats into a single district and leaves the 300,000 Native Americans without any hope of meaningful influence in state government. Competitive legislative districts can be provided by following the Coconino County Board of Supervisors plan. Thank you. Cheryl Eaton, Navajo County, outside Lakeside. We're here on the sovereign nation of the White Mountain Apaches, where I lived and or worked for 35 years. Competitiveness and fairness of districts are the specific redistricting requirements the people of Arizona voted for in 2000. The current CD1 is competitive. Candidates have to work hard to win it and have to listen to and represent all of their constituents to be reelected. Voters of all parties work to get out the vote, and Native American votes can make the difference. The draft CD2 map is not competitive. Republicans win test elections nine out of nine times. That eliminates the power of the Native American vote. They would have 22% of the votes in the district, but no chance of electing their candidates. And the elected representative could just ignore them. The representative would only have to cater to his or her base to get reelected every time. To give all people a chance to affect the outcome of an election, the margin between political parties should be quite small, maybe 3%. I support the Navajo Human Rights Commission's proposed map for CD2, CDF 010, because it creates a competitive district. 
As to legislative districts, my comment is similar. A bright blue district next to a bright red district discourages people from participating. Why try when you know you will lose or when you know you will surely win? The outcome is predetermined by the boundaries of the districts. I favor the Coconino County Supervisors proposed maps for the new LD6 and 7. For the last 150 to 500 years, Native Americans have fought literally and figuratively to preserve their lands, their languages, their cultures, and their lives. They deserve to have a fighting chance to be able to help choose their preferred candidates and even win a couple elections. Appreciate the work of the, of the commission and I wish you well in devising fair and competitive maps. Thank you. Good evening, honorable chairwoman and commissioners. My name is Jody Inman. I live in Pine Top, and I recognize that I am standing on Apache land. I am thankful that I was able to live and teach here and in Cholo. My sons graduated from Altusay High School in White River and are still in touch with their Apache friends. I'm retired now, but hope to be here until my last breath. In the 34 years I've lived in the White Mountains, I've seen the relationship between the Apache and Navajo nations in their culture, family ties, and econ economy, along with the towns in Eastern Arizona that serve us all in traverse and commerce. I ask that you support the congressional draft map proposed by the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission, CDF 010, to protect these historical ties. The current map proposal for CD2 could disrupt these communities of interest, are not compact in our area, and are not competitive in ideology. We have little in common with Prescott and Yavahai Pet County if they were brought into our district. So again, I ask you to please support CDF 010, the Navajo Nation map proposal. Keep the lines as close to the present boundaries as possible. And thanks for being here for us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Miss Apoy, and I live here in Navajo County. I'm here to voice my concern about the congressional draft maps. CD2 took a highly competitive district and turned it into a non-competitive district. And the nine sample races used, the one party won all nine of those races. The vote spread in the district is over 7%, which is simply too high. The district is not competitive, and that didn't need to happen in order to accommodate the other constitutional criteria. In a district as large and as diverse as CD2, ensuring competitiveness and wholeness of communities of interest is key so that all constituents get the representation they deserve. In Navajo County, we have more opportunities and challenges in common with Greenlee and Graham counties than we do with Prescott. And we would be better served to have those counties in our district. We need to work together to find solutions to the unique problems we face in Northeast Arizona. To have this kind of solidarity, a district must be competitive, so elected officials need to work for every constituent. CD2 is drawn is currently 22% Native American, and most Native Americans vote as a block. If the current map is adopted, they will have no say in who ultimately wins the election. This election will be decided in the primary. This kind of inequity should not be supported. Additionally, independent voters will be disenfranchised because of the low primary turnout. A small minority of voters will be choosing a representative for an area that covers more than half of the state. This inequitable situation can be avoided. This commission can redraw CD2 and use the map submitted by the Navajo Nation. It's map CDF 010. This map has a less than 1% vote spread and includes the counties of Graham and Greenlee. This ensures that the best candidate will win the election, and that is a win for all of us in CD2. Thank you very much, commissioners, and thank you, White Mountain Apache Tribe, for hosting.
Good evening. I'm Virginia Dodson from Vernon in Apache County. These draft maps violate my community of interest. First, we don't belong in any copper corridor. Here, we do tourism and outdoor recreation. Next, we're a border community. We have to get along with a diversity of people, the tourists and our Native American neighbors who come here from nearby towns to go to school, work, shop, and hold county offices. The maps you have drafted for both CD2 and LD7 reach across the state to merge us with areas such as Prescott and Western Yavapai County, where extreme nationalism has taken hold. This does not fit our community. Draft CD2 does bring 13 tribal nations together, but then cancels out their votes with blocks of extreme right voters. This is a parody of the Voting Rights Act. Tribal members will never be able to elect candidates of their choice as it stands. CD2 does not even meet your own broad standard for competitiveness. In closely divided Arizona, a 7% advantage is a landslide. I urge you to adopt the map CDF010 from the Navajo Human Rights Commission. It is competitive and keeps our community of interest together. And I ask you to replace your Northern Arizona legislative maps with those drawn <clears throat> by the Coconino County Board of Supervisors, map LDF050 for LD7 and map LDF051 for LD6. Thank you very much. Supervisor Daryl Seymour. We don't have Daryl Seymour here, so we'll switch. Oh, he's behind the glass. Good evening. We're grateful for the tribal uh, chairwoman hosting this tonight, the commissioners. Daryl Seymour, as the mayor of the uh, city of Sholo for eight years, have been the uh, county supervisor for the past two. Wherever you draw a line, you're going to cause contention. You're going to cause boundaries. I think that's one of the great things that we have in our community here is we're a community that works together. We're a community that, that thrives with when the tribe is successful, the White Mountain Apache tribe is successful. They do business, they do things in, in the city of Sholo. But yet their values are probably different than those of the Navajo Nation. And so you have that issue. How do you really help the Navajo Nation be heard as well as the White Mountain Apache tribe be heard? Because they have different values and different principles. But yet we all work together. We're here in the White Mountain, we're in here in Navajo County, are trying to make the best that we can. And I think we need to look at what's best for the people, how we're best represented, our farmers, our loggers, our ranchers. That's a history of this state that needs to be preserved. We will go back to those days of raising cattle, raising sheep, having farms, being self-sufficient, and loving our neighbors. And if we can do that and continue to work together, I think you guys can do better than what you've proposed to us so far. And we just hope that you'll listen and keep the people that want to be together together so their voice can be heard. We have not had a voice of rural Arizona for years. I've gone down to the state capitol many times and our representatives aren't even there because we do not have the same values and principles. May you help us have a voice so that we can be heard the same as everyone. Thank you. At this time, we'll take, uh, send it over to Avondale. Thank you, good evening. At this time, we'd like to introduce Commissioner Lerner. Good evening, everybody. I apologize for being late. My name is Shireen Lerner. I am one of the commissioners on the um, IRC. Thank you for being, thank you for being here. 
Thank you, Commissioner Lerner and our Spanish interpreter. Hello, my name is Gabriela Contreras. I am the Spanish interpreter. Hola, mi nombre es Gabriela Contreras. Soy su intérprete. Si necesita servicios de interpretación, por favor, vengan a verme. Gracias. And we'll call our first five speakers, if you could line up to my right. Daniel Schwartz, Ulysses Correa, Giselle Garcia, Martin Nowakowski, and Claire Steenweik. I'm Dan Schwartz and live in Scottsdale Precinct. I would like to thank the commissioners for the labors that have gotten us to the version 1.0 draft maps. As a matter of political geography, my natural disposition is to look for how competitive a map is. From a 10,000 foot uh, level, the legislative map does fairly well. I know there are places where it could be tuned on competitiveness and should provide something for each stakeholder to be unhappy about. I'd say that's a true sign of success for a map. From a more personal perspective, I'm a longtime resident of Scottsdale Precinct who can be very provincial, keeping my daily activities to the immediate neighborhood as much as possible to shop, to eat, to work, and to walk. What to routinely takes me further afield is cycling, which defines a dynamic community shaped by a common interest of being outdoors and out of traffic. We, the cyclists, inhabit the canal paths, the bike paths, and the less traffic streets. Many of our paths chaotically circle Camelback Mountain, are deflected by the uh, hills of PV both, and in some cases run up against the Phoenix Mountain Preserves or even through it. If you extend that dynamic community, it also include the paths of those who uh, hike and extend more deeply into Camelback and Phoenix Mountain. Wait, by the time you're done adding in the rest of the people who are our neighbors, you pretty much get a place I would call the Camelback community of interest. You know, where many of us, and this is where many of us live out our daily lives where we recreate, shop, dine, worship and educate our children. Yes, we do sometimes go beyond up north or out west to vote, um, to visit larger uh, islands of commerce or attend cultural events, but this is where we live and would like to be represented. This concept of community is decently supported by LD4 as it's currently defined, so I would urge the commissioners to leave it largely intact. Some modifications are clearly inevitable since it's 10,000 over in population and has some split precincts. If I were to tune its boundaries, I would move the northern boundary south, losing some population along the way. Um, may I continue? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Hello, good evening, uh, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Ulises Correa. I'm with uh, Mi Familia Vota, and I'm from proposed uh, District 25. I've been living here in Avondale uh, since I was born. Um, I have a family and relatives who live in LD25 as well and have suggested uh, taking a mirage entirely into LD25 and add more of Avondale so that the city isn't split three ways between 25, 22, 24. Uh, these changes would keep similar communities together, more accurately reflecting the changing nature of the West Valley. Uh, example, urban communities, partic particularly the growing Hispanic community of Goodyear, Litchfield Park, uh, and Avondale. Um, I would also like to mention I support the map submitted by Latino Coalition for Fair Redistricting. Uh, thank you so much for your time and take care and thank you for everything. Hello, good evening, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Giselle Garcia, and I'm here representing Mi Familia Ota, which is a civic engagement organization, um, nonprofit that has been here in Arizona for over 15 years in both um, Pinal and Maricopa County. Um, our work is to ensure that the Latino community has a voice in the political making process, and I just want to state that Mi Familia Ota supports this map submitted by the Latino Coalition for Fair Redistricting. Uh, we request more competitive districts and Latino ability to elect districts in both Southern Arizona and Maricopa County. Um, we just want to make sure that our community is being heard and accounted for in these maps that will affect us in the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you and thank you so much for all your work.
Good evening. My name is Martin Nowakowski. I'm from Glendale, Arizona. I'm here to specifically ask the commission to reconsider the eastern boundary of Legislative District 25. I ask you to have the area east of the Agua Fria River that is proposed to be an LD25 to be redrawn into a legislative district that lies east of the 101 freeway corridor. The, the, this would be either LD26 or LD24. The, the community east of the Agua Fria, which by the way serves as a natural boundary, has more commonalities and community ties and the, the representation we have now, we wanna continue that because we need strong advocacy for our lower income populations. The proposed map will significantly diffuse and break these, these community commonalities and not allow us to elect representation with a, a higher degree of advocacy and awareness of, of our communities uh, of interest that share our values, that understands our educational needs our cultural needs and social economic challenges. I'm a dad and I have students who have gone to Pendergast Elementary School District. This will take seven schools and put them into a, a different district, breaking them apart. I believe that education is one of the most uh, important issues and putting us into a community that has no understanding of our educational needs that is totally different. The communities of Pebble Creek, which is 55 plus, is different from our younger community, Luke Air Force Base, which has 99% uh, no children in their family households. Loop 303 corridor is different from Loop 101. Please keep, um, uh, thank you for your time. Good evening, my name is Claire Van Steenwijk. I live presently in LD22, soon to be LD29. And once again, wanna thank you for the changes you have made up to this point to keep us basically together. The one more change we would like to see is that the Northwest of 303, which is, is, the, uh, is a precinct within LD22 and the Vistantia precinct, which is, I believe the name is called, uh, let me see. Stantia, Dusty Trail Precinct, and the New Development Desert Oasis Precinct off Grand. You're breaking them up into different voting areas when you do what you've done. And to factor the numbers in, if you'd like, you could take those two precincts and put them back into LD29 and take El Mirage, which is growing south toward Goodyear, and put it, because it is bordered on two sides, which are natural borders, Agua Fria being one of them, make it go south and that would augment the population problem. Other than that, I wanna thank you for what you've done. I have this, some other things to submit about CD8 and its borders, but uh, the one thing I like to submit to us in all of these things is none of us are ever very happy with a lot of the work that's done, but the reality is this, like it says on our money, e pluribus union from many one. And I think it would be better off if we all understood that and realized that no matter whether we're male, female, black, white, brown, red, yellow, or white, we're supposed to learn how to work together and to resegregate us into little districts just to please what we could call either a, our former nationality or whatever you wanna call it, doesn't make this the United States, which is what you're supposed to really do. Thank you for your time. God bless, have a good day. Our next five speakers are Beatrice Buda, Alexis Delgada Garcia, Yvonne Dominguez, Annette Alvarez Valencia, and Maribel Ponce. Hello, my name is Beatrice Buda. I am 18 years old and I live on 43rd and Camelback in Maryville in the Alhambra district. I have lived here my whole life. I went and graduated from Metro Tech High School and plan on going to community college in Glendale Community College. And I also work in Peoria. Excuse me, district, I'm sorry, it's me. Okay. Um, could you, I, it's hard to hear you. So if you could speak a little more clearly, that would be great because I wanna hear everything you have to say. Uh, Thank you. 
In our district, 52% of the vote is Latino and 11% are Black. Like I said before, I live and work in Peoria. I have seen the difference in how people there work, talk, and have mannerisms. It is important that Peoria isn't included in my congressional district because as much as I like my job, Peoria is a majority conservative and they don't have the same viewpoints as me. They don't have the same experience as me, a black woman living in Maryville. This will affect who is in office, how much funding is being invested where, and yet again, will be left without representation. Also, Glendale needs to be included with my district. That is my community of interest. That is where most of my peers went to school. Glendale Community College and the surrounding communities have been in part of the experience that I have been in. It is vital that they get to participate in voting people in office with people that lived like them, sounded like them, understand their struggles, and also have the same values. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Are we good? Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Delgado Garcia. I'm a community organizer with the organization Arizona Center for Empowerment, also known as ACE. I'm 20 years old. Um, I'm a, actually an organizer with them. I also live in District 30 and Congressional District 3. Um, District 30 is actually one of the poorest districts in all of Arizona. Um, so we consist of a lot of governmental assistance, like quick access, um, educational funding that I was a part of, and I also um, got to be, a, thankfully, a part of. Um, but as we're talking about congressional districts and um, the different types of linings, I definitely ag agree with Beatrice. Um, we shouldn't include Peoria as they are majorly conservative and um, they don't vote and haven't lived the same struggle as I have. Also, putting Peoria in our district means that um, there's going to be a raise of funding and um, people that are actually needing things like access and governmental assistance like WIC are not going to be able to actually um, get those needs because of the funding going up. And another part of that is that I also go to Glendale Community College. I'm studying nonprofit leadership and nonprofit leadership and development alongside American Sign Language. And so I'm really, really happy to be there. And the people in, in Glendale, Glendale Community College um, are also a vital part of my community in Maryville. Um, they have um, talked about the same struggles, the same experience. They've talked about the same um, experience of going to El Walman on 35th and Bethany home, going to El Supid on um, 51st and Camelback, right? They've also experienced um, going to Alhambra High School where I went to and graduated from. And so people in Glendale also have lived the same experience that I have, and they deserve to also vote with a lot of the Latino and black um, people in Maryville. Hello, can you hear me? Cool. Um, so my name is Yvonne Dominguez and I'm autistic and I'm part of the LD829 district and I'm a four year student that goes to Phoenix College. I'm actually about to get my associate's degree next year, which I'm a bit excited. And so, yeah, so for me, like, as I see in my community here, like the Arizona Latino Coalition for Fair Redistricting presented a map for like Congressional District 3, which was anonymously adopted until like late in the mapping sessions. So like, you know how like this coalition proposed district was more compact than the one on the draft map. And it kept more communities of interest together. So like this draft version of CD3 brings in racially polo, uh, excuse me, polarizing voting areas, a pure, while taking out Latino areas of Glendale and adds another city with very little in common with Peoria to the district. So like, please take Peoria out of the CD3 and add back in the southeastern part of Glendale. Also another thing, the southeastern part of Glendale belongs in CD3. It is a majority Latino area with modest income families who shop together to go to church together and go to school together with the West Phoenix and Maryville area just across Camelback. They have much more in common with West Phoenix and also for mostly voters, conservatives, and like, you know, like them with Peoria where only 20% of the population is Latino. I'm asking the commission to put Peoria back in CD8 
and put the older, more Latino part of Glendale in CD3, but also, most importantly, who votes with people like me, women of color, women with, aut with autism, students, and Hispanic women. Thank you so much. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so hi, my name is Amir Alvarez. I am 21 years old and I'm from District 30. So I've lived in Maryville for like 12 years. It is important that Glendale is included in Maryville vote since they have lived in the same experience as people in Maryville. So I personally go to Glendale Community College because people there know what it means to be Latino or Hispanic. They deserve and should be able to vote with all Maryville folks who vote with Hispanic folks. Also making Sure that Peoria isn't in District 3 since they're mostly conservative and have an experienced livelihood in Maryville or with Hispanic folk. Hola, mi nombre es Maribel Ponce. Hello, my name is Maribel Ponce. Vivo en el Distrito 3. I live in District 3. En el 5712 de Bethany Home. At 57 uh, in Bethany Home. He vivido ahí por más de 20 años. I have lived there for more than 20 years. Es importante que incluyan Glendale. It is important to include Glendale. Por nuestro voto y, dist y distrito porque ellos. It is, uh, it is important to include Glendale uh, with our vote in district because they. Um, mis propios vecinos. Comadres, amigos, comunidad. Because our own neighbors, our buddies, our friends, and community. Han vivido ahí y tienen el, la misma experiencia que yo. They have lived there and they have the same experience as I do. Ellos deben tener la opinión. They should have the opinion. De, de elegir los representantes y senadores. To be able to select the representatives and senate. Que con los mismos de West Phoenix. With, with the same ones as West Phoenix. Y Avondale. In Avondale. Y es importante es important de que Peoria no sea incluida that Peoria should not be included porque ellos no tienen because they don't have la misma experiencia the same experience ya que la mayoría since the majority de Peoria son conservadores of Peoria are cons uh, conservators comparados compared a los de Glendale to the ones in Glendale quienes votan who vote con hispanos como with, yo with Hispanics like me por favor Hagan, please make y escuchen a gente en la comunidad and listen to the people in the community porque nos afectaría mucho because it will affect us a lot muchas gracias que dios los bendiga thank you so much and god bless you we'll now go back to pine top Our next speaker is Cody Gosian, Kim Whitley, Jesse Chanta Chandley, Lisa Green, Sylvia Allen, Louise Lidget, Jerry Hubbard, Jandy Craig, Mary Ann Joseph, Randy Ruther. Hello, my name is Cody Gassion from the San Carlos Apache Tribe. I'm here on behalf of Chairman Terry Rambler, uh, Chairman Newber, Vice Chairman Watchman, and Commissioners. On behalf of the 17,000 members of the San Carlos Apache Tribe, thank you for the opportunity to host this important event and to provide comments on above draft redistricting maps. In response, Please accept this letter as the tribe's public comment as it pertains to the community of interest that make up the currently proposed Legislative District 6 and Congressional District 2 as set forth in Legislative Test Map Version 10.0 and Congressional Test Map Version 7.1, respectively. Briefly, the tribe believes that any proposal to revise district boundaries from the prior redistricting cycle by fractionating 
the existing community of interest shared among the seven tribes and their homelands will have an adverse impact by diluting their current voting strength. Moreover, revising district boundaries should splinter and dilute the community of interest shared among tribes and tribal members who live off reservation in nearby cities and towns. Therefore, it is absolutely imperative that the commission maintain a robust Native American majority minority legislative district capable of electing its preferred candidate into office. The San Carlos Apache Tribes Reservation is a community of interest. The San Carlos Apache Tribe is a community of interest with the White Mountain Apache Tribe and the Navajo Nation and other rural tribes in Northeastern and Northwestern Arizona. We continue to have concerns about the inclusion of Flagstaff in the proposed legislative district six, as discussed below. Under the Voting Rights Act, our tribal members are entitled to a district that gives us the opportunity to elect candidates of our choice. If the commission were to include Flagstaff in legislative, legislative district six, it could prevent us from electing candidates of choice into the legislature. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kimberly Whitley. I've lived almost my entire life in Arizona. Currently, I reside just down the road in Lakeside. I have a nine year old son who will be old enough to vote before these maps expire. My family understands that these maps will have long term consequences for ourselves and for all Arizonans. We are alarmed by the number of uncompetitive districts, both Democrat and Republican leaning in the proposed draft maps. Competitive districts are essential to rural areas that are often difficult and expensive to canvas. We need competitive maps to ensure that candidates engage meaningfully with all their constituents. These maps would create an environment where candidates are elected by the dominant party's primary. This leaves zero incentive for candidates to engage with our local communities, respond to our specific needs, or amplify the voices of the significant percentage of indigenous people in our region. These maps eliminate the need to campaign and with that, they eliminate a natural buffer against extremism. I want to be represented by candidates who desire my vote, who care about the people here, and who understand that all communities in rural Arizona deserve consideration. We believe that CD2 in particular will fail to produce this type of candidate. The lack of competition does a disservice to everyone, regardless of party or lifestyle. We'd ask that the commission redraw this district and adopt the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission map CDF010. Thank you for your time, for this opportunity to comment, and for your effort on this critical endeavor. Good evening. My name is Jesse Chanley. I live in uh, Navajo County, just outside of Shola City Limits. Um, I teach political science for Arizona State University. And one of the biggest problems we have is voter apathy and citizen apathy. Uh, and that apathy is increased when we have uncompetitive races. And so I would really encourage you to create more competitive districts, both at the congressional and the legislative level. And currently, uh, the districts I would be in would be won every time by a single party. Uh, is not a situation that encourages participation. So I would encourage you to consider the maps uh, offered by the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission for the congressional districts, the CDF 010, and the legislative districts opposed by the Coconino uh, County Board of Commissioners, Board of Supervisors, uh, LDF uh, 050 for District 7, and LDF 051 for District 6. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lisa Green. I'm a resident of Lakeside in the current Legislative District 7. I am here to speak in honor of my great friend, David Peelman. David ran for the Office of Arizona State Representative for LD7 in the 2020 election. David campaigned from one end of LD7 to the other and understood that because of how LD7 is currently drawn, that he had very little opportunity to be elected in LD7. Despite that, David did a great deal of outreach to the 
the residents on the reservation. The current LD7 is not a competitive district. The current representatives in LD7 do not come to speak to us. We don't know them. We have never seen them and we have never had the opportunity to hear from them. I would like to thank the commission for the opportunity to speak here today. During the listening tour in July, we came and we spoke and told you that we wanted a more competitive rural district, a return to the district we had prior to the 2010 and 2011 redistricting. I feel that you took our comments to heart and did listen to us. I would like to th say thank you for that. I, that being said, I do support the current proposed maps for the new LD6 and LD7. I also support the proposed map for CD2. As a resident of the current LD7, I can tell you that I don't feel like I have representation right now um, at the Arizona state level. Because of that, I appreciate the opportunity to have the new LD7 be drawn as a rural community of interest while also making it a more competitive legislative district. Thank you. Good evening. I very appreciate the IRC being here and the, and the White Mountain Apache hosting this. Uh, I want to just start off really quick by saying that uh, I support, oh, I'm Sylvia Allen, former senator for District 5 and District 6 and, and former Navajo County supervisor. I support the CD2 map that you have drawn uh, because it's, it, it is maintaining a rural congressional district, which I think is important. And it's very difficult because in rural Arizona, we have less population. And I would not want to see you put any of Maricopa County into CD2. I want to say also that, uh, as Lisa said, that you listened to what we said in July when we talked about communities of interest and how we wanted to have a rural legislative district. I really support what you did with your uh, proposed District 6 map. You listened to the tribes and how they wanted to maintain their Indian district. At the same time, you listened to what we said here in Shell Pine Top Lakeside and in uh, parts of South Navajo, uh, South Apache County and South Navajo County that we wanted to be reunited as communities of interest because we are and we made a, a huge argument to that point as well as we lobbied for a, a, a rural legislative district that included uh, poor parts of the old uh, district five uh, district counties. Now, the argument about Flagstaff doesn't fit is just totally wrong. For one thing, Flagstaff is 63% Democrat. This is going to be, maintain a Democrat district. This is uh, District 6 is a Democrat district, and they're going to be able to elect people as they have throughout the last 10 years. And the reason they want to put lay, uh, Flagstaff into District 7 is because they want to dilute the Republican vote. And um, you can't have it both ways. And District 7, uh, the, the way you've drawn District 7, I want to thank you again for what you did. Just please work to make it more rural. The urban part that you have put in District 7, we need to have that removed and add in more of rural Arizona so that we can maintain uh, our rural communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, honorable commissioners. Being robbed of our voice in the state legislature by the previous IRC commissioners, rural Arizonians have been forced to endure taxation without representation. Truly your IRC would be dishonest and highly irresponsible to bury our rural voice again within a largely urban district. Rural Arizona is not a dying way of life, but a living hope for Arizona's future. We are strong principled citizens. We are a valuable reminder of the struggles of the past, a teacher of the ways of life, and that includes the Native American Americans. We are a witness to the flaws of our forefathers and their amazing successes through ingenuity and perseverance. 
We are necessary. Urban residents dream about leaving the city behind to visit rural Arizona. Tourism floods our Arizona highways. They travel to our small towns and wilderness areas to use our roads, our forests, lakes, mountains, the amenities we build and caretake so they can unwind and reconnect with nature. Our rural atmosphere is beautifully healing and restoring to mind, body, and spirit. We are necessary. We must be protected. That is why you must restore our rural voice by sanctifying a truly rural district. You must make it happen. We support the IRC draft map LD7 with changes that will establish a rural voice. We must we also support the IRC draft map of LDS Native American District combined with Flagstaff, which are communities of interest rather than with our rural district. Thank you very much. Good evening, members of the commission. My name is Jerry Hubbard, and my wife and I live in eastern Arizona in the town of Overgard in southern Navajo County. This beautiful part of our state includes large areas of national forest lands and the White Mountains. Our citizens live in rural areas and small towns, and we have common interests economically and culturally, including farming, ranching, mining, forestry, and tourism. Visitors from the Phoenix Valley and elsewhere come here to enjoy hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, and stargazing. Because we have limited private lands, we are very concerned with the issues of water, electric power, education, and federal land management. These issues are unique to our area and quite different from Metro, Phoenix, or Tucson, or the suburban communities surrounding them. Our common interests unite our citizens instead of being divided by political or racial differences. Ten years ago, our district was divided up into four other districts, all of which included urban or metropolitan areas, which very much diluted our voices and our voting power in the legislature. We are asking the commission to reunite the five plus eastern counties, according to the legislative map currently proposed for legislative district seven with some minor changes. The district would include all of Graham, Greenlee, and Gila counties, the southern portion of Navajo and Apache counties, along with eastern Pinal, northern Cochise, and southeast Yavapai counties. This would result in a district that is solely rural and undivided. In addition, we would recommend the proposed map for Legislative District 6 to include Flagstaff in the Native American district. Thank you for this opportunity to comment. Excuse me. My name is Jandy Craig. I'm a member of the White Mountain Apache tribe, and I appreciate living in Pine Top. But my work, my homestead, and my family are on the Fort Apache reservation. Um, the White Mountain Apache tribe is a community of interest with the cities of Pine Top, Lakeside, and Sholo. Tribal members like myself living in nearby towns such as Pine Top and Sholo should not be excluded from the expo proposed LD6. My children, along with many other tribal children, attend school at Blue Ridge and Sholo schools. Buses transport our children to and from the reservation to these schools daily. We would like for these school districts to remain in the same legislative district. We propose that the Native American majority minority district be as close as possible to the district that was created in the last redistricting cycle. CD2 is 22% Native American. Voter registration increased this past election, including a 12% increase of Democratic voters in Native American communities. <laughs> Under the Voting Rights Act, our tribal members are entitled to a district that gives us the opportunity to elect candidates of our choice. Including Pine Top, Sholo, Springerville, and CD2 would allow us to elect candidates of choice. 
In 2004, Native American voters were unable to elect their candidate of choice and the only Native American majority minority district in the state because Flagstaff voters mobilized to defeat the Native American candidate of choice. When the district was redrawn after 2010, the Native American majority minority district excluded Flagstaff. Flagstaff has grown by over 18% since the last census, a much higher rate than any of the off-reservation border towns in Northern Arizona. This means that Native Americans will likely lose the majority during the decade and further to be impacted from electing candidates of choice if they are kept with the whole city of Flagstaff. Native Americans are the most underpopulated race in the census. Arizona is ranked number one in the U.S. with the highest number of American Indians and Alaska Natives living in hard to count census tracts with 68.1% of the state's native population living in hard to count areas. Poverty, lack of broadband services, housing insecurity, language barriers, and the pandemic further increases the risk of the 2020 census undercounted Arizona's Native American population. The Voting Rights Act instructs the IRC to use its lawful discretion to protect the interests of the only Native American majority minority legislative district in Arizona. The commission should deviate greater from the target population due to this undercount in order to create a strong Native American majority minority district. The U.S. Supreme Court has affirmed that total population deviations of 10% or less are presumptively constitutional and population deviations greater than 10% may be justified by a legitimate state interest, such as preserving a strong Native American majority minority legislative district. The commission should underpopulate the Native American district more in order to maintain a strong Native American majority minority district under the VRA as a strong interest. We do not support the draft map and re request the maps to remain as close to current maps as possible. Thank you. Ahea. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak with you. My name is Mary Ann Joseph. And I've been a taxpayer and a citizen of Arizona for more new more years than I'd like to talk about, um, at least over 50 years as a taxpayer and involved in the communities I live in Arizona because I am a native. And I applaud everyone for all their passion and their concern. I really love the fact that we're gonna try to figure out how to all get along because our futures are what is at stake here. And I haven't really heard, other than the one gentleman out of Avondale, speak about dollars. So I would urge you to keep that in mind, because as we all get squeezed for more and more dollars to support uh, what's happening um, in our nation and in our great state of Arizona, we have to keep that in mind as well. So I am in support, I believe, to the proposed with minor changes. I appreciate all the hard work and I wish you all very good luck on how you're gonna make this all work for all of us. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Randy Ruthier. I'm from Taylor. I appreciate the time to address you today. I'm here to express my support of Arizona approved draft maps LD6, LD7, and Congressional District 2. I approve Flagstaff remaining in LD6. AZ approved draft map LD7 preserves a conservative way of life. I don't support Maricopa County moving into con Congressional District 2. And I'll cut, cut off there and thank you for your time and wish you a happy Christmas.
Madam Chair, members of the commission and listening audience, I have three more speakers and then we will take a break after that time. Miriam Quintero, Holly Hansen, Dave Berry. After the break, when we'll send it back over to Avondale. Marianne Quintero. Good evening. My name is Marianne Quintero. I am a member of the White Mountain Apache tribe. I'm here in to represent um, my community. As a member of the White Mountain Apache, it is important for my nation to have a good relationship with our congressional person and all elected leaders at the state and federal level. The government to government relationship is critical for protecting tribal, tribal sovereignty and allows us as White Mountain Apache people to successfully manage our nation because what is ultimately decided by policy for funding elections and much more directly impacts our daily life. I don't, uh, current, the current draft map of CD2 is diluting our Native American vote and it's disheartening and it concerns me as a tribal member. I'm concerned that the congressional draft map CD2 has changed my district from being highly competitive to being a Republican district. I know that every vote in my current district counts and I have seen my congressional representative work hard to make sure that all the issues of my community and many other communities address. Our current representative worked hard for everyone and on and off the tribal lands. If the Republicans are given a chance to consistently win elections without having to work for, for every constituent and genuinely include communities like mine, I know that our voting power will be diminished and that I will not have the same quality of representation I, I have right now. Adding, adding more Republicans to my district by redrawing the map to. Thank you. Holly Hansen, and after our Holly Hansen is Dave Berry. Hello to the commissioners and uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak. I've lived I've lived in Pine Top Lakeside since 1975. And I appreciate the, the beauty of this this area. And so I'm here to speak for the the trees, the water, the wildlife, and I think um they are the reason that I moved here, and I hope that they continue to be as uh, vibrant and healthy as they are now. But I, I see that it's kind of they're kind of at risk, um, and that's really all I have to say. That I, I haven't heard anyone uh, speak for them; they don't have a voice really. Um, thank you for what you're doing. My name is David Berry of Apache County. Thank you, commissioners, for what you've been doing. You have a hopefully good record, I think. Ah. Uh -huh. And uh, thanks for setting this up so that people could express themselves here. Um. And uh, tribal members, thank you.
I want to make an appeal here to ensure a voice for retired people in the matter of voting equality. I'm uh, confident that the frackers, farmers, cattlemen, loggers, small businessmen, government employees, the political class, and realtors have a voice in redistricting. Let's make sure the tourist industry um, and the indigenous people and retired are heard from too. For example, please do what you can to avoid overloading these districts with the people known to be champions of the extractive industries. Thank you. At this time, we will take a five minute break. It is 731, we will be back at, at 736. Five minute break for our transcriptionists.
We have one minute before we start again. One minute. Okay, it's 7.36, are we ready to begin? Okay, our next five speakers are Lynn Peters, Trey Terry, Athena Stort, Lon Juan, Jeffrey Spector. And let's see, yeah, that was five, go ahead. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Lynn Peters and I have lived in the city of Surprise for 21 years. Today, I am here to testify about the lack of competitive districts in the current draft maps. The criterion for competitive district, competitiveness has been described as secondary based on the phrasing of the Arizona Constitution that it should be considered, quote, where to do so would create no significant detriment to other goals, end quote. But the other goals have similar limitations described as, quote, where practicable. Mapping consultant Doug Johnson has explained competitiveness is viewed by the courts as having equal right to the others. Uncompetitive districts can ensure, encourage, candidates to appeal to the most extreme elements of the electorate. There are 13 proposed safe Democratic legislative districts. There are 15 proposed safe Republican legislative districts. There are only two very competitive districts within a four-point vote spread, LD2 and LD4. Four of the safe districts are within a seven-point vote spread and sometimes considered competitive. Despite this, LD9 and LD23 favor Democrats. LD13 favors Republicans. LD16 is safely Republican in all nine measured elections. The, districting, the district mapping would likely ensure that Democrats never have an outright majority in our state legislature. The criterion of equal population across districts is important, but it can vary up to 10% between the most and least populous legislative districts. This can permit the commission to take smaller communities of interest into consideration and make them more competitive. This has been proven in the US Supreme Court. Good evening. My name is Trey Terry. I'm a governing board member on the Awafria Union High School District. And I just wanted to speak a little bit about my communities of Avondale, Goodyear, Buckeye, Litchfield Park. We are a Southwest Valley, Maricopa County, Phoenix-based communities, 20 minutes from downtown. I know there in the past, um, 10 years ago, my school district has five high schools. We were split into four different legislative districts. Um, you know, going all the way to Yuma and, you know, so many different things. I wanted to speak on, you know, making sure that we create Maricopa County based uh, districts out here. Two issues that aren't really partisan water and transportation. Not only are our water issues different than Yuma's, they conflict. Um, our area is one of the fastest growing communities in the entire country. City of Buckeye is the fastest good year shortly behind it. So on that front, um, just wanted to make sure that you know our, our issues, whether, you know, nonpartisan issues are completely different than the rural communities. And at the same time, I would argue we're completely different than um, the communities once you go inside the 101, or it was mentioned previously, the Awafria River is a natural boundary 
that um, separates a lot of these older communities that have been here for 40 plus years, as opposed to the new ones that are coming out. Speaking briefly on your proposed LD25, um, there's a portion that goes like into Peoria, into Glendale, well, like past 83rd Avenue. That's completely different than some of our communities out near Luke Air Force Base, uh, Verado, Buck and the school district that I represent. And then also wanted to draw your attention to north of the mountain, you kind of split Whitman and Sun City Festival from that, and it can only be reached by going completely around the mountain and through other districts. So with that, have a good evening. Good evening, Commissioner. My name is Athena Stewart. I'm an organizer with Stand for Children, a nonprofit education advocacy organization that focuses on ensuring that Arizona provides equitable education across the state. I'm also a resident of Goodyear. Avondale is a key city here in the West Valley, and we work well with our neighboring cities. Today, I'd like to talk about Goodyear, where I've lived for the past decade and have built my family of two littles who have grown to love the diversity the city brings. I would like our cities, Avondale and Goodyear, to be together in one congressional district. Our cities are very similar. We are close in size and have both grown a lot in recent years. We are both family-friendly cities and our residents are very connected, working and shopping and going to school across city boundaries. The West Valley deserves to have more than one voice representing us in Congress to make sure we get our fair share of federal funding and aren't passed over for Phoenix. We're excited that our West Valley cities may get more funding with the new infrastructure bill and, and maybe with Build Back Better, also since significant federal investment is key to keeping up with the growth in our area. I am a resident of Goodyear and would like to see Avondale and Goodyear in the same congressional district where we could make our voices heard and get fair representation and someone who would work for our unique West Valley needs. Additionally, redistricting Peoria with the West Valley is controversial for many reasons. I am a product of public education who lived in Glendale but attended high school in Peoria. And I can tell you that I never felt fairly represented as a Latinx in a primarily conservative city like Peoria. People didn't look like me, they didn't talk like me, and certainly didn't live like me. Currently, West Valley is a Hispanic majority district, and replacing Glendale for Peoria would not fairly represent our Latino community. Voting, right act, voting Rights Act requirements must be kept at the forefront of every conversation, and any map considered must first meet these requirements. Latinos are far more than a community of interest. Latinos voters are a populous minority constituency protected by federal law and this mandate to maintain and expand the voting strength of Arizona's Latinos must be kept in mind when the commission reviews and makes changes to these draft maps. Thanks for your time. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for your time and effort in doing such an important job to make sure our districts are being drawn fairly and competitively. My name is Lang Huang. I'm a mother of three. I grew up in central Phoenix. I went to elementary school here, high school and university years for my bachelor and master degree. Over the past 20 years, I've noticed the lack of funding and representation in my congressional district one. There should be a central Phoenix district that gives the city and its resident proper representation in Congress. As one of the largest growing metropolitan areas in the country, Phoenix should be an anchor to a congressional district so it can receive the services and representation it needs to secure federal grants and funding for critical transportation and infrastructure projects needed for the city of this size. If anyone has taken the public city bus, you would know what I'm talking about. The district should include downtown Phoenix in Kento, the historic neighborhoods north of downtown, and the northern Phoenix neighborhoods up to the 101. This would keep these Phoenix communities together and give them the ability to influence an election and have a representative that serves this growing area. This configuration would support and keep whole small business communities, historic neighborhoods, and LGBTQ communities that have all asked to be kept together. This would also mean that neighborhood north of the 101, which did not want to be connected to Central Phoenix, are able to be connected in a different district per their wishes. Again, thank you for your time, and I wish you luck in making your decisions. Good night.
Good evening, members of the of the districting commission. My name is Jeff Spector. I am a resident of Goodyear, Arizona, in Maricopa County, and I live within the proposed draft maps for Congressional District Nine and Legislative District Twenty Five. I support these uh, maps because, for the most part, they include uh, the interrelated communities of interest in my area of Goodyear, Litchfield Park, and portions of Buckeye. People in these communities have common, common interests, whether it be uh, land development um, matters, public safety, education, uh, water, transportation, as well as issues pertaining to Luke Air Force Base. We share shopping, medical services, churches, school districts, and social activities. So I just uh, appreciate you uh, listening to what I had to say tonight. And thank you. Thank you. Our next five speakers are Summer Baker, Richard Hopkins, Wes Crew, Lisa Sun, and Dewana Schultz. Hello, my name is Summer Baker, um, and I want to stress the importance. Sorry, and I want to stress the importance of compact geographic areas, areas of interest, and the respect to city and town boundaries. I live off of Baseline Road and Mill Avenue, and my community is made up of hardworking single-family homes. We go to school, work, and spend our leisure time in areas of Ahwatukee, South Tempe, and West Chandler. We share similar priorities, interests, and values amongst ourselves. There's been talk. Uh, in this meeting and previous hearings for the commission to stick to a single requirement, competitiveness. When residents claim they want competitiveness, what they really are saying is they want everything to be 50-50. Sad truth is, is this disenfranchises half of the community. Uh, if the commission were to focus their time on the other requirements, such as keeping districts geographically compact, respecting city and town boundaries and communities of interest, then these districts would fairly represent the majority of people that live in them. This is why people move or remain in certain areas. Previously, my community was grouped into an LD that hardly had any association with the interests and values of the other parts of town I described earlier. It made no sense to have south of Southern Road from Priest to McClintock grouped into the entire Salt River Indian Reservation. That part of town does their shopping, work, and their kids go to school in areas of Mesa. It would make more sense to group them into an LD in Mesa where they have a majority when picking their candidates and representatives. It's not fair to the people on the reservation or in my community where we live to only be represented part of the time. This is why the commission needs to focus on drawing districts that first and foremost have equal population, which your LD8 draft map 10 does not adhere to. Second, respect the communities with like interests. And lastly, keeping districts compact with respecting city and town boundaries. Please move LD8 South Boundary to South of Bull Road. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the commission, my name is Richard Hopkins and I'm the senior member of the Buckeye Elementary School District Governing Board. Our elementary school district has been a singular community of interest for each of the 131 years that we have been uh, organized. Every child, parent, and other resident of the district has the same interest, a great public education, safety, and well uh, spending of their tax dollars. The previous uh, legislative districts, we were split into two, with four, for the most part, living in Yuma, uh, two and a half hour drive away, so you know how long we saw them. This current map splits us into three with possibility of representation in Tucson, uh, Levine Tolleson, or up in the Sun City areas. I appreciate the draft map that you drew, LD0011. That would keep our school district in one legislative district, as it would our neighboring districts, Liberty, Arlington, Palo Verde, Buckeye Union High School, 
Wickenburg, uh, Gila Bend, and Paloma, and uh, the other one down there that escapes me. Uh, so respectfully request that we keep our school district together. And speaking of our friends in Gila Bend, the draft maps have their 480 school, excuse, excuse me, 480 student district split into three separate legislative districts and their 2100 member town also split into three separate districts. I know you will uh, do what's right and I appreciate the hard work that you have all put in. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and to the public. My name is Lisa Sun. I reside in West Phoenix near Tolleson and Avondale. My family and I have been there since 2005 and currently it's LD19 and into LD22 with the current draft map. As you can see from the map, our square uh, mile has increased almost 20 times, meaning that our population will be concentrated over 50% in less than 1 20th of that new area. Therefore, when we have elected officials running for public office, we will not be represented with more of the diluted population concentration that has expanded almost 20 times. In addition, the current draft map of LD22 has potentially four to five congressional uh, district overlap, therefore diluting representation and funding for us from the federal and the state level. Lastly, with the deviation numbers with the population of every 30 district on the draft map is unconstitutional. According to our framers of the Constitution, we are to be represented by population. The deviation varies greatly and it disadvantaged people of color, meaning the deviation is over 10%, again, resulting in less representation and less funding. Moving forward, please consider these uh, variations because it will lead to opposition challenges. And of course, it will be have to be resolved in the court, uh, the court of law, therefore costing all Arizonans taxpayers money. Thank you for your time. Good evening, committee members. Uh, my name is Chris Schultz. I'm the precinct committeeman for the Libertarian Party for the Cortez Precinct. Looking at the proposed map for Congressional District 3 and LD19, uh, both of them are improved, in my opinion, from the prior map, as at least for CD3, we're no longer part of Tucson. Uh, looking at the statistics, however, there's still a vote spread of 40% in CD3 and 17% in LD19, which is a third party who tends to ride down the middle, means that none of our candidates will ever stand a chance in these districts. Alternatively, for anyone that happens to be more conservative, the vote spread also means that those individuals will not receive representation at any rate because the vote spread in a state as close as ours is exceeding what it should be to be a competitive district. So as much as these districts have been improved, they need to be improved further to make sure that the vote spread is in a competitive rate and in line with what it should be. As we should not be focusing on where we are different, we should be focusing on where we are the same in Arizona and for what our area's differences and similarities are. A candidate should have to appeal to both sets of bases to win an election and at this point in the districts in which I reside, I will not have my particular political leanings represented at any rate. I thank the commission for the work that they've done so far and look forward to uh, any future revisions thereof.
Good evening, commissioners, Commissioner Werner. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank the commission uh, for the work that they're doing and for also for the geographical location that you're in. I think it's really important that you brought the tribal community to the table and to the forefront of this process. Um, not only does it mean a lot to the people that we advocate for, it means a lot to the community that you're in. So thank you for that and thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, but the, the regards that I have tonight are based off of CD3, um, CD8 um, that are in Phoenix um, as pertains to some of my colleagues that joined me earlier tonight and some of the statements that were made. We in the communities that we vote in, the communities that we live in, in Avondale, Maryville, and Glendale believe that we should all be voting together and that the provisions that have been made to add Peoria to District 3 is obscene. Uh, Peoria doesn't identify with a lot of the communities that vote together, including the other half of Avondale that's included in District 3. Um, so we're suggesting that you take Peoria out, put that in the District 8, include Glendale in District 3, um, and keep Avondale and Goodyear together in a voting district as those two communities of interest are very alike um, in economic status um, and in, um, in voting preferences. Um, and secondly, I'd like to make a note of the concern of the district and district, which I believe is LD-17, which is currently attached to what is now LD-10 in Tucson, which separates the voting, um, that separates the voting spread that is in the eastern side of Tanca Verde. Um, Tanca Verde needs to be able to um, vote with the district that neighbors it to the west of LD-10, of which is a light um, community of interest. So um, that is all that I have. Like I said, thank you so much for letting us be a part of this process and including Pine Top. And um, I really look forward to the rest of the hearings. Thank you. Thank you. Our last five speakers are Natasha Chavez, Sandra Dowling, Jordi Santos, Monica Ortiz, and Max White. Hi, uh, thank you very much. Um, I will make this quick as I have two minutes. Um, I wanted to support the Arizona Latino Coalition for Fair Redistricting Map. Um, also, on a personal note, I lived in the Breastridge Precinct, uh, which is in uh, the proposed 22. And um, as you as you guys have proposed, I we are um, now lumped in with most of the West Valley. I would like to find a way to keep um, West Phoenix with West Phoenix. Um, also, I would like to ask to not split Avondale, whichever um, precinct you put in it, I mean, district you put it in, it doesn't matter as long as you keep Avondale together. So thank you for your time. Good evening, my name is Sandra Dowling. I'm the legislative district chairman for the current legislative district 13 for the Arizona Republican Party. Um, I will, um, depending on what the boundary lines look like, I will be in one of two possible districts in the West Valley. But looking at the majority of my district right now, um, I'd like to commend the commission for the work they've done because I think they did a great job. And um, I think that it's truly representative and reflective of our community itself. However, the questions that I have related to this are very technical in detail. I have gone through every single precinct that will be in the new District 25 as well as the ones that are currently in there. And I've looked at them to make sure that one minor issue didn't get overlooked. And that is where precincts are being split between one district or another. And I've made a list of the precincts that are in either District 29 or in District 22 or, or whatever district. I didn't, I didn't note it on my, on my paper here, but I can, I can follow up with that if you'd like. Um, um, Cardoning District is split. Vermont precinct is split. I mean, I'm sorry, Cardone precinct. Vermont precinct is split. Purple Sage precinct is split. Uh, Osuna, Osuna Park precinct is split. Um, Sun Air precinct is split. Youngtown is split. Dysart is split. And Rancho Mirage is split. So each of those districts would pre create a logistic problem for both Republicans and Democrats as we try to handle our district itself because half of our precinct would be in one district and half would be in another. Now, some of those areas, it looks like uh, today they might be vacant land. 
Um, but I know that that's not going to prevail in the next two to three years and obviously for the next 10 years. So if there's, um, if there's a way to handle this, either going through the Board of Supervisors and asking them to redo the precincts, or if there's a way for the commission to handle it, um, I'm very well aware that if you move one line, then another line has to move. And, um, and I don't necessarily want that to, to, to mess things up either. But those are the technical questions that I have. So thank you very much. I say just please, these kind of technical things, please submit the same thing as what we've heard from others. Okay. For everybody who is submitting some things like that, we would love to have you submit your comments. We have um, lots of opportunities. If you go to our website, you could put those in there. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> So my name is Jordy. Uh, my father who has worked in Maryville for years, uh, for my mother who has sold food to our neighbors and my friends for years, and for my friends who have to have gone to middle school, high school, and college with me. 43rd and Thomas is where I have oriented my life all um, since I was young and growing up, where many of my friends and I have left played and explored the neighbors that we lived in and the people who are a part of my life. Um, these are my friends and who have changed my life. A sudden change of redistricting will change part of my home. A sudden change where Peoria is added and Glendale is taken away. Peoria isn't a part of my home. Glendale isn't a part of, Glendale is a part of my home. Getting the representation we deserve and that we know, that we need and that we have fought for, like the roads that, that stop us from getting to work and the roads that have stopped us from getting to school. We have worked here, we have went to school here and we have went to church here. We deserve to say that we have lived here in our communities and we deserve to say that Peoria isn't our home and that Glendale is. To keep our home as it has and to keep the people that have worked in these homes, we want our district to stay the same. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Monica, Monica Ortiz. Um, I have lived, or I live in District 3. Um, I went to school there, um, high school, elementary school, and now I am currently going um, to university in the middle of, uh, right on the border in Glendale, Peoria. Um, and it's quite a different feeling than, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's quite a different feeling than um, what I'm used to. Um, I know when I'm, going over to Peoria, um, right, like as soon as it goes down the street. So I think that um, keeping Peoria separate from Glendale and not taking out Glendale is a priority, um, just to make sure that we're keeping the communities together um, since we've already been living that way for so long. Um, what else? Okay. <clears throat> This coalition proposed district more compact than one on the draft map that kept more communities of interest together. This draft version of CD3 brings in racially polarized voting areas in Korea while taking out Latino areas of Glendale and adds other cities very little in common, such as Korea, to the district. Please take Peoria out of CD3 and add back their southeastern part of Glendale. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner Chair Newberg, Vice Chair Watchman, Commissioner Lerner, thank you for being here in Avondale, Commissioner Meal and Commissioner York. 
My name is Max White. I live in the city of Avondale, and I've been honored to be appointed to Neighborhood and Family Services, as well as the Board of Adjustments. And I'm very grateful that Mayor Ken Wise and Avondale City Council has opened up the chambers for you to be here. As many others have said, the city of Avondale is a very beautiful place with the Trace Rios area, many recreational areas. We're very close to Goodyear and your maps. We would love to submit a draft map, but I want to invite you to do something revolutionary. Keep cities together in Arizona. There's no reason to split up cities, whether it's Avondale, whether it's Glendale. Keep cities in the same legislative and congressional districts. That makes sense. Do things that make sense for our kids. In Avondale, we have Litchfield Elementary School District, Pendergast Avondale Elementary School District, Littleton Elementary School District, Tullison Union High School, and Aqua Fria Union High School. We need to keep our kids' interests at the forefront. We're thinking 10 years from now, these 10 years from now, these kids will be voting, some of them. So we want to make sure we put our children's interests ahead of our own. In addition to that, we want to make sure, to the extent practicable, that we keep the districts even for legislative districts. Thinking of that 238,383 people in each legislative district, make sure those are compact. I would love to continue to recommend draft maps, but you have mapping advisors, you have voting rights experts, you have attorneys, please take their advisement. We need to do something revolutionary. Our communities of interest are already here. We're called cities. Thank you so much. That concludes our speakers here in Avondale. We'll go back to Vice Chair Watchman and Pine Top. Thank you, Avondale, for wonderful comments. And to those that are here, we appreciate your comments. And thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, please go online and submit, if you choose to do so, your map using our software. And you can find that at irc.az.gov. We will be in Payson tomorrow and Winderock to continue these public hearings on the draft maps. So with that, we want to say thank you for joining us. Please be safe on your travels home. So the meeting is adjourned and good night, everybody. Thank you.